Hello everyone, I'm FMZ and this is episode 27 of An Englishman Abroad, A Journeyman Story with Leicester City Football Club. Pre-season is now done. Let's take a look at the outgoings as well as the incomings for next season on the intro. So we start with the outgoings first of all and we start with a player that has gone for a fee of £28.5 million that is Ricardo Pereira he has joined Arsenal wanted to talk to them for the figure that they were offering couldn't really turn it down Next man to pick out is Isman Silamani. he has gone to Nice for £2.9 million a player that didn't feature under Brendan Rodgers. I'm not really a fan in real life, so I thought there were better options available and we had better options already. He was out on loan last season, so was sold on July the 1st. Another player that has gone, and that's Kalgul Soichu. He has gone to Real Madrid for £19.5 million, rising to 25.5. He wanted to speak to Real Madrid, and to be honest, you cannot hold a player against his will with Real Madrid calling. Another player that's gone is Nikechi Iannaccio. He has gone to Norwich. Again, pretty much for the same reason that Silamani has gone. We have better striking options now at the club, so he's surplus to requirements. Borja Garcia joined Middlesbrough as well for £10.75 million. He was unhappy with one of the incomings. You'll see who that was shortly. So I decided to cut my losses. I don't want unhappy players in my squad. He has gone to Middlesbrough. And last of the big names that have gone is Adrian Silva. He has joined Stoke City for £13 million, rising to 17 in the finish. Had him at Real Betis last year, as you all know, but with the abundance of midfield players that we already had at the club, he was surplus to requirements too. So I'm happy with the outgoings. You'll see we've spent £99 million this summer, and he wanted to buy one or two players, but when you start selling players... Obviously, as you know, you have to start replacing them. So let's take a look at the replacements. And we start with Papa Diop. I have gone back to Real Betis to bring Papa Diop to England with me for a fee of £5.75 million. As you know, he was my star performer last year. I was delighted he got Young Player of the Year. I thought he deserved Player of the Season, in truth. So I'm delighted to bring him to the King Power. Hopefully he will have the impact he had for Leicester that he had for Real Betis. Second man in the door was Antti Ribic, bought in from Eintracht Frankfurt for £22 million. A wide player, a very good wide player at that. 17 of pace, acceleration of 15, the boy has got speed. And that's what I like on the wings. Plays as the inside forward, but can also play as the winger. Finishing a 12, dribbling a 14, he will frighten defences in the Premier League and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. We found our replacement for Ricardo Pereira in Aaron Juan Basaka has been bought in from Crystal Palace for a fee of £22 million. That was his release clause after Crystal Palace were relegated from the Premier League last season. Key attributes for Aaron, pace of 15, anticipation of 14, concentration of 15, Tackling of 16, very good things for a defender. Diop wasn't the only person I had at Real Betis last season. Alexander Isaac has joined us on loan for Borussia Dortmund. Did wonders for Betis last season. Seven goals in 17 games. If he can do that for Leicester. Obviously, Jamie Vardy is 32 years old now, so he will need a break from first team action. Obviously, we've got Max Gomez as well. This is why Isaac was bought in and then allowed Iheanacho to go. Another player bought in is Sebastian Szymanski. He's been bought in from Legia Warsaw. 21 year old Polish international. Potential to be a four and a half star player. One for the future this one. Will get some game time this year in the attacking role behind the striker but it's definitely for one for next season and beyond. Another player bought in on loan is Musa Silla. He has come in from Monaco on loan until the end of the season. He will get his opportunities Probably more in the cup competitions as well. 
much like Isaac, but again, a player that can come in if needed. Just two more to go, and the two significant ones, really. We start with Clement Lenglet. Now, Barcelona were prepared to let this kid go. Unbelievably, he wasn't registered for their La Liga squad, so we have got him in at a snip at £16 million. His release fee was about £260 million, I think it was. Something crazy like that. So definitely another one for the future. He is for the present as well now. Obviously, we have got Johnny Evans, who is getting on. Derek Boyata, Harry Maguire. I can see him being a perfect foil for Harry Maguire in the centre of our defence. So it was a no-brainer, really. And lastly, and the biggest transfer of the summer, 28 million pounds was spent on Bruno Fernandes from Sporting Lisbon. Now, wasn't one that came up on my radar. He was on the transfer list at Sporting Lisbon, but it was one that was recommended that we have a look at him. He came back with an 86% rating, and it was a must-sign-at-all-costs job. So we did. £110,000 a week. It was more than I was wanting to pay, but when you get a player of his quality become available, you pay the price that they asked, and they asked for £28 million. We are paying it over a little bit of time, wasn't a straight 28 million pounds that is not how i do things so they will eventually get their money sporting lisbon for a player they deem surplus to requirements which i thought was mental it's worth having a look at the transfers that the premier league has done this season as well so rafael varan has come in to manchester city for real madrid for an eye-watering 147 million pounds closely followed by paulo dybala 142 million pounds from juventus Ruben Neves has gone to Chelsea for £76 million. Marco Asensio has gone to Liverpool for £72 million. Tottenham have spent £71 million on Suzo. Robert Lewandowski has come to the Premier League as well. It's been a huge summer for the Premier League clubs. And it's nice to see us in the top 20 or so with the transfers three or four times. So let's take a look at the season preview. We are predicted to finish 8th at 40-1. to 1. We're not a bad shout for the title. Better than what they were the last time they won it. They were 1,000-1 to 1 in 2016 when they won the Premier League title. So could it happen? We don't rule it out. We certainly don't rule anything out in the Premier League. But our aim is to finish within the top six. Obviously, that is European football. We're going to have to get past an awful lot of teams to do that. Relegation odds. Blackburn are predicted to finish last. Middlesbrough and Stoke are predicted to join them back in the Championship. Leeds are just above them with Burnley and Brighton the next two. So at 40 to 1, I'd be disappointed if we were down the lower end of the table. We are certainly aiming for the top half at least. And the top half is the bare minimum. That is the thing that the board have given us to do. We need to finish in the top half. We need to finish in Europe. I need to get this team into Europe. It is a lot of pressure to put on myself. But if we can do that, we can prove to the bigger clubs around Europe and the world that I can do this and I can take a team that are predicted to finish lower down the table and push them into the European places. Much like we did with Real Betis, but we've done very well in the transfer market. There is a lot of good, talented players that have come in, and I'm excited to try and put this squad together to make it happen. It's just now getting on with it, really. We start with Blackburn Rovers. That is our first game. Steven Gerrard's first competitive game in charge of Blackburn. And then back in the Premier League as well. It should be a very good occasion. You will see how we get on with that next time around as we round up the first few fixtures of the new league season. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and would like to do so, please click the subscribe button down in the corner. Thank you to those who have been subscribing to the channel recently. We've seen a little bit of an upturn in the subscriber count and it's very much appreciated. That was episode 27 of An Englishman Abroad, A Journeyman Story. I will see you after we've done a few games of the season to round up all the goals from all the games. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.